I'd I'd be there. Too. DJ's home, Middlestone. <laughs> I'd be at the front. Would you? I'd be in the mosh pit, yeah. Well, you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> you heard it here first. Season one felt like this extraordinary jigsaw puzzle of taking Loki out of everything that was familiar to him and everything that was familiar to the audience about his relationship with everyone in the MCU and introducing him to an unfamiliar world of the Time Variance Authority, the TVO, and placing his kind of chaotic, improvising quality inside this institution of order and structure and form. And he, th he gets to the end of that journey and the end of that six episode and all the, the complexity of the confrontation with Sylvie and comes back and Mobius and B-15 don't know who he is. So it ends on this almost the biggest question mark of all, which is who am I? Where am I? So I couldn't wait to get stuck in to try and answer those questions and also complete the journey. I think we, we only, we we're just at the beginning with season one in terms of introducing the multiverse and a, a new multiverse of infinite possibility with variants. You know, it's, it's been a, even since season one came out, it's been really exciting. I remember going to see Spider-Man uh, No Way Home and thinking, oh yeah, there are three Spider-Mans in there. And there were two Lokis, sort of, you know, it's, a, it's sort of, it, 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 all multiverse of madness. It's something that's now real and, and, and exists as, it's as alive for the audience as it was for us. When Sylvie completes her mission, in a way, you know, she's been trying to get some kind of revenge on the TBA for, for the whole series, and, and that, sort of ends in this super complicated fight with Loki and killing human remains. So I guess I'm just, I'm really excited to see where she goes next and how she feels about that. ...of the TVA itself, a battle for the soul of the TVA. And I say this, it's really good. I mean, even though we can't talk about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to, for, for the audience yeah, to see it come uh, next summer. I'm so glad that, that Marvel has decided to announce my my, my involvement because I've been holding on to this secret for so long. Nobody knows, not even my family. So, <laughs> so it's like, you know, <laughs> so now the secret is out, I, I can talk about it. Also, so, you know, you want to pre preserve the thrill for the audience of watching it for the first time. Amazing teams of people whose daily work is <laughs> choreograph the fights, teach them to us, and also be creative. Stunt work, especially in, in, in the MCU, is they are as artistically inventive as any other department. Because sometimes in a screen, but it might be like two characters fight. But the stunt department have to infuse that fight with character and whimsy and wit yeah. and clarity and dynamism and energy. They're real like unsung heroes, yeah. really. They work so hard. And Sarah Irwin, um, my stunt double for series one, yeah. really collaborated with me on the yeah. way that Sylvie moved yeah. and yeah. her attitude. And we were doing it together. Oh, no careful. pressure. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh my God. Yeah, that, uh, don't get me fired. I've <laughs> been fantasizing about it for, for many, many years, all the way back to when the first Iron Man came out. And, and you know, I, I saw all the movies in theaters, I've seen all the shows, and I've constantly watched it, you know, on YouTube, how passionate and enthusiastic these fans are. And to be up on stage today with yeah. Sophia and Tom and Owen and Kevin, and to be on the receiving end of that, mm. it's just been incredible.